But interestingly, what we found is that dopamine is an important modulator of how much variability exists in these circuits. So with very high dopamine, as you could find in, for example, psychosis or sometimes in bipolar disorder or many, you have very different activity patterns every time something happens. And with very low dopamine, and this is the case when you get, for example, Parkinson, you get kind of a brain locked in a certain state and the same patterns repeated over and over and over. So this was very interesting, but can we really measure when the animal starts doing something if there's very high variability and then uh, if you repeat it over and over and over and go through the series, the variability in the brain decreases to the point where it's very similar. So uh, what Fernando Santos in the lab did was to record the activity of several neurons through the different times the animals are doing the actions of pressing the lever and seeing how similar or correlated is the neural activity across all those neurons every time it's being done. So, and what he saw was that the average correlation went up as the animals learned these better and better. So, the neural activity became more similar to itself as the animals were learning to do this. Now, what's interesting is if you take variability here, variability in each individual's brain as measured by this coefficient of variation, variability was very high in the beginning. So the first times that the animal was performing this action compared to the second time, the activity in the brain was very different. But as you can see, as you go through the series, right, it gets to a point where the variability is very low. So for novelty seekers like Vic, to get that big uh, dopamine or noradrenaline rush, at this point here, you introduce a new variation. Now, this is great about actions, but what about thoughts? So what about things that we think are actions, but they are not executed, at least physically, immediately, at the time of planting? Well, what about the concept of going to the, the big uh, landfill before you actually execute it? So you have the idea on your brain, and then you cannot do anything. You have to withhold yourself for must be terrible <laughs> when it's big projects. You have it in your mind. So Sam alluded to this haha -ha moment, uh, this insight moment. And one of the things I find most fascinating is the following, right? So these people have been trying for, for some time to study what happens in the brain during this haha -ha moment. So for these in 2004, for example, uh, these authors did a very simple game with the numbers, but actually it's not a mathematical game. It's a very simple game. There are three numbers, one, four, and nine. And for example, here you have four and one. Your response is to say the other number, nine, right? You go to the next level, say in the computer, now you have four, nine, your answer is one. And you go so on and so forth until you get to the last number and you complete the task. Now, if you notice, the second number is equal to the last number, right? So actually, if you do this over and over, after a while you can realize, oh, heck, it's nine, right? The second is always equal to the last. So about 20% of the people that do this, after some time, they realize, shit. The second one gives me the last one. So I get to the second one, I tell you what the number is. Now, if people are awake, even if you let them wait for eight hours until they give you the answer, uh, still 80% uh, 80 of the people don't get it, 20% of the people get it. 
But if you wait the same amount of time, but you let people sleep, now over 60% of the people wake up and say, shit, the second one is the same as the last one. Right? Now, I asked Vic also at Tina, does it ever happen to you that in the morning you have... And it actually does, apparently. And he told me a wonderful story uh, about Dali, that after lunch he would eat and drink his wine and put a, a small plate close to, to, to him and hold a heavy key and then doze off until the, the key would fall on the plate and he would wake up and start drawing, right? <laughs> so apparently he knew already this before 2004. Now, in the study that Sam alluded to, now, there's a different aspect. So, in the study that Sam alluded to, there's a verbal communication of the insight, right? So, you realize and then you explain it that you know the rules. And what I wanted to show is the following. So, this area of the brain here, the right anterior temporal lobe, is what's uh, activated in that study. But what's interesting, if you see here, these are here is the time of response when people report to have had the insight. But about minus three seconds before that, a big change in gamma activity, which by the way in different uh, brain areas can be increased by high dopamine, a big change in this gamma activity already occurs before in that brain area. So in a sense, there is a brain activity change that precedes insight. And this is very interesting. <laughs> but you just know that you have the insight here, right? I wonder if you could ever have the insight but not have access to it, right? Like uh, <laughs> dream about the solution and not being able to remember that you solved that problem. Now, do animals have this? I apologize, but I'm going to change this so it, that it doesn't keep on bumping and you get the unexpected bump that becomes expected. <laughs> so, do animals have this? Can animals plan things and have an insight into the way they are thinking? So, this is a very beautiful drawing done by illustrator Diana Marcus where she has the mouse trying to control the mouse with its own thought. And we actually did an experiment like this, where the mouse, through its neural activity, can control an auditory cursor. So can control a tone that moves, but the only thing that controls that tone is the animal's neural activity. And the animal hears the feedback, and what's interesting is if the animal reaches a high pitch, it goes, boom, a pellet, nice pellet, it's not chocolate in this case, but it's a sweet pellet, drops out of the sky, and if the animal goes down, low pitch, the animal can get sucrose. Right? So what happens? Can animals really get this? And I'll show you a few videos at low resolution. This is the first time the animal experiences this ever. So, is the sound on? So, this, this tone that you hear is being controlled solely by the neural activity so by the activity of the brain of this animal. And as you see the animal is moving, here's the place where reward may appear. But the animal is moving, trying to figure out what to do to get that reward, right? But look what happens only after six days. The animal is immobile, not moving at all, just controlling the tone to get sucrose, and then consumes. So this is within six days with no rule except what you see here. So this is the only thing. Now you could say, well, great. So that's some type of reflex, right? That, does the animal know it's actually controlling the neural activity to get this? This is very hard to show. 
And we tried many ways, and of course it's impossible to prove something like this. But one of the things we did, for example, is, okay, so if the animal is moving the cursor to get pellets or sucrose and knows what it's doing, what happens if we give them before the test, right, all the pellets that they want? So we give them a full bucket of pellets, they eat it until they want no more pellets, and then we put them inside. And what happens is they almost 100% of the times go whoa, 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 always down, right? So they go for sucrose. You can do the opposite experiment. Then you give them all the sucrose they want, and then they go, ah, 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 ah. So to some extent, and then we did other experiments, but to some extent, they have at least some knowledge that controlling that cursor, I don't know if they have the knowledge that it's through their brain activity, but controlling that cursor without movement is what leads them to get the reward they want. Now what's interesting, and I won't go into this, is that similar neural processes and the similar change in uh, neural variability that I, I showed you occur for this type of uh, experiments as during the physical actions of doing novel things. So what have I told you about? If this moves. That I think this is interesting to discuss afterwards or for you to take home. Maybe the generation of novel actions or novel thoughts is something much more fundamental, not just in artists, but we need it uh, as animals to survive. The generation of new things allows us to explore the changing environment in very different ways throughout evolution. And maybe any deviation from expected, large or small, either from things that you see or experience or things that you do, uh, may relate to this process of creativity. And I showed you that, or at least I argued, that there may be active creation of novel patterns of activity in the brain. In everyone's brains here, but also in the brains of some animals, at least. And that seeking novelty, the process of actually looking for novelty, uh, may have been something that was selected for. Now, I want to end up with this line. I showed you some disorders where, for example, dopamine is altered or psychosis. But I think, in the end, one of the interesting things for us humans, so creativity is a deviation from normality. If you deviate too much, you may be called abnormal or sick or crazy, right? If you get a stamp that you're creative, then you come back to normal, right? <laughs> so that's great. But maybe this doesn't happen for everyone, right? So maybe this is a fundamental process, right? And so how we have mutations generating variability in life and how we get cancers from cells mutating and dividing. Maybe we it's great to be creative, and it's part of our biological process, but that's what brings us so many mental disorders sometimes. Okay, and that's what I had to tell you about creativity, which is not much because we need a lot of research in this subject. <laughs>